the station in escape pods. One of the mere crewmen on that mission was so stressed, he had already decided to kill himself. One of the cosmonauts, actually, uh, Lazutkin, told me that on the 10th days, he decided to commit a suicide because he couldn't stand it already. He went to a remote place in one of the modules. And before uh, suicide, he decided to sleep. The cosmonaut woke up and chose to live. On the journey to Mars, the fear of death will be a constant companion. <coughs> From liftoff to splashdown, there are many ways to die. They will need to find a new breed of astronaut with better coping skills and different personalities. And they will all have to pull together as a team unlike any other crew in history. Their lives will depend on it. Sergei Volkov and Roman Romanenko, the cosmonauts chosen by Russia to go to Mars, must learn how to trust each other in a survival situation. We start together and we should finish together, maintaining the best possible psychological microclimate in the team. The Russians know only too well that pairing the wrong crew members could lead to tragedy. In 1982, Russian cosmonaut Valentin Lebedev sent a message to mission control. If you don't bring us down to Earth now, I'm not going to work with this corpse anymore. After six months in space, Lebedev was prepared to kill his fellow cosmonaut. Russian mission control talked him out of what could have been the first murder in Earth orbit. On a mission to Mars, NASA could face the same challenge. Since 1999, NASA astronauts have trained at the National Outdoors Leadership School in Wyoming. Here, the exploration generation of astronauts will learn how to deal successfully with conflict. Expedition behavior is oftentimes wrapped up into a very positive personality, but positive expedition behavior also comes in the form of when people are willing to ask the hard questions. Cannon Gator's favorite example is the crew of STS-107, the seven people who would tragically die when the Columbia burned up in the Earth's atmosphere in 2003. Technical delays gave the astronauts two years to train together longer than any other shuttle crew. In the Wyoming wilderness, they faced a problem. One crew member did not want to scale a mountain with the others. Then he changed his mind. He decided the good of the team was more important than his own desires. So basically, a group that's going to aggressively pursue the peak and a second group that's not so aggressive, aggressively going to pursue the peak. Uh, that's one option. The uh, other option is if we all just stay together as a group of seven and uh, do the best we can. You know, go for the Here's a great example of positive expedition behavior shown by Mike Anderson, who said, I don't really want to climb, but for the team, I will. Cannon Gator and his team have identified four personality types that would be ideal for a journey to Mars. The driver, the analyst, the motivator, the relationship builder. And all of them have to be team players, no cowboys. And there's no room for duplication. On a trip to Mars, you're inevitably going to be faced with problems. If you've got the same thinkers, the same types of thinkers on a trip, uh, you're going to run into problems pretty quickly. The Russians are now ready to conduct a test on Earth to simulate the Mars mission. Six volunteers will be locked in a small capsule for at least 500 days. Oxygen and water will be recycled. There will even be a simulated Mars landing and communications with the mock Mission Control Center. Of course, we're also looking at the possibility of nervous breakdown in the conditions of spaceflight. If someone snaps, the experiment can be canceled in a moment. There will be no such luxury in a spaceship especially now as they face the most demanding and dangerous moment of their journey. About six months after leaving Earth, the exploration astronauts face the deadliest part of the entire mission, penetrating the Martian atmosphere and landing on the Red Planet. To get a probe onto the surface of Mars is very challenging. We're batting about 500, roughly speaking, about 50-50. 
getting a human onto the surface won't be any less difficult. The crew has done everything they can to stay mentally and physically alert. They've trained and exercised, but they've also lived through radiation, weightlessness, and the psychological pressure cooker of isolation and confinement. And now, the moment of truth. You simply want to survive. Of course it is nerve-wracking to face the uncertainty, whether everything will function well, whether you will live. Going from Mars orbit to the surface has been called the six minutes of terror. On the surface, there will be no waiting rescue crew, no medical team. If you've got astronauts who are not in the peak of condition, then you may have an unsuccessful mission right at the very end where they need to be you know, at their prime. To solve the psychological risks of the manned Mars mission, some discoveries still need to be made on Earth. In 2006, NASA conducted an 18-day experiment in its undersea lab called NEMO. 15 meters long, just four meters across, NEMO is an underwater analogy for the Mars craft. For this mission, NASA installed cameras and microphones to observe stress levels in the crew. This data was fed to Mission Control for real-time observation. The computers are an early warning system for mental crisis, triggering treatment for a stressed out astronaut, or in the worst case scenario, restrainment. As the NEMO project pushes forward, NASA seeks crews which come equipped with their own problem-solving skills. Unlike Apollo 13, there will be no Houston to instantaneously deal with deadly problems. I'll get my turn in the driver's seat. NASA is also experimenting with artificial intelligence as companions for the mission to Mars. That continues to challenge Rick. Each astronaut might have a custom-designed AI companion to talk to when human interaction becomes too volatile. It's a start to keep astronauts distracted from the day-to-day -day rhythm of life in space. Finally, experts in both Russia and the United States are looking for ways to pinpoint the ultimate crew for the exploration generation. No adrenaline junkies, no space cowboys, only team players who respond well to structure and can think outside the box in moments of crisis. It's hard to say what awaits us on Mars if we go there. But this training is a way of developing skills to face any extreme conditions anywhere. Mission planners, ground control, and billions of people on Earth will wait anxiously to see if the first humans to travel to Mars will make it safely to the surface. 25 meters. Will they successfully push their way through the six minutes of terror, or will they perish unseen millions of kilometers? <laughs>